have you ever wondered what perfumes are made of or things in your local supermarket that make things smell better or taste better like food flavor perhaps today we're going to be looking at molecules that are responsible for all of these so these molecules are known as esters so this is an, an example of an ester molecule of ethyl propanoate and today we'll be talking about the structure of an ester ways in which we name the ester, the general formula, the functional group, the use cases of an ester, uh, fats and oils, because those are types of esters, and also a process called hydrolysis. Okay, so what is an ester officially defined as for you to remember for your exam? So esters are organic compounds that are formed by the reaction between alcohols and carboxylic acids. Okay, so alcohols and carboxylic acids are organic compounds that we learned in the previous session. And the reaction to produce an ester is known as esterification. It just simply means creating an ester or condensation. So why, why would it be called con condensation? So condensation simply means to produce water in addition to another product okay so that's a term that's kept commonly used in chemistry and um, all you need to remember this type of reaction is known as an esterification reaction and a condensation reaction okay so i'll give you a challenge i know there's a hint below identify on this diagram where the functional group of the ester is have you found it? Well, it is this group right here, the COO group. So this group consists of one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms, okay? Where one oxygen atom is double bonded to that carbon atom and the other oxygen atom is single bonded to that carbon atom. And that oxygen atom basically connects the two carbon chains. What you need to know about the common properties of an ester is that firstly it is volatile. In other words, it's easy to evaporate. In other words, it has a low boiling point. So at room temperature, it, is, um, it will evaporate quite easily. So this, is, this property is known as volatile. It also has a distinctive odor. In other words, it has a a, a fruity smell, a quite pleasant smell. And this is something that I really enjoyed um, recognizing during um, my chemistry sessions back in the day. Now this, uh, the ester's name depends on the alcohol and the carboxylic acids that are used to create the ester. So perhaps, uh, for example, this ester, ethyl propanoate, you can see here, is made up of ethanol and propanoic acid. And how it's named is that the first part of the name, ethyl propanoate, ethyl comes from the ethanol reactant. Okay, but instead of, uh, so basically the ethanol name, you need to replace the ending with an EY. So it becomes an ethyl. Okay, now similarly, the second part of the name comes from the carboxylic acid reactant, but the name, uh, the propanoic acid name in this case would have its ending changed with an, um, with an O8 instead of an oic acid, yeah? So as I said, the second part comes from the carboxylic acid. Now the esterification process um, happens when the hydrogen atom is removed from the OH group of the alcohol or the OH group is removed from, sorry, and the OH group is removed from the COOH group or the carboxyl group from the carboxylic acid, okay? And I've circled here the H from the alcohol and the OH from the uh, um, carboxylic acid. And these two groups, these are these two items basically combine to form that water molecule that you can see there. So it's very easy to identify 
which part or which sections of that ester molecules come from what reactants. Now typically, uh, sorry, always, <laughs> the um, side that has the double bonded oxygen to the carbon atom will be that carboxylic acid part, okay? And the other side, um, you basically split the carbon to oxygen bond right down the center to um, identify which uh, is the alcohol part and which is the carboxylic acid part when it comes to naming. Okay, so if you were to see that line there, you can see that the alcohol part has two uh, carbons in its carbon chain. So this must come from an ethanol reactant, right? And similarly, on the carboxylic acid part, the carbon chain consists of three carbon atoms, so it must be named as, um, it must be coming from a propanoic acid reactant. So that part of the name will be propanoate, okay? So, and, and, and the key thing here is where you um, see that division there. So uh, remember that the carboxylic acid part of the molecule, when it comes to naming, contains the oxygen double bond and um, you basically identify the split between the two carbon chains at the carbon to oxygen single bond, okay? Now, unlike the other molecules that we talked about in our series, the general formula is not quite clear. It is not a function of N um, to the number of carbon atoms and oxygen and hydrogen atoms. It actually depends, right? Because there are two reactants that produce the ester. So it could be a, a, a very different, a very large number of uh, combinations. So in general, in chemistry, the general formula is R and then the functional group COO and then R dash, where R is the carbon chain or, or the hydrogen atom, in this case for uh, perhaps say um, methanol or sorry, methanoic acid and, um, and R is the carbon chain of the alcohol reactant, and R dash comes from the carbon chain of the carboxylic re acid reactant, okay? So um, generally, this general formula is not uh, very commonly used because it doesn't really tell anything, and um, you can't really put a, put a function to it. So I think this is something you just need to remember and accept, but don't worry about remembering it um, for the exam, okay? Now, let's look at other examples of um, organic molecules. So firstly, you have on the top, methyl butanoate. Why is it methyl? Because um, the alcohol part consists of one carbon, yeah? So that must come from the alcohol methanol. And the second part, sorry, the carboxylic acid part comes from an acid that has four carbons in its carbon chain, butanoic acid. So the second part of the name will be butanoate. Similarly here, you have propyl ethanoate because there are three carbon atoms in the alcohol uh, carbon chain and two carbon atoms in the carboxylic acid carbon chain. Okay. Now, what are uh, esters typically used for? As I said in the start of the video, because of this uh, common property of a fruity, um, pleasant, uh, pleasant smell, odor, it is used for food flavorings and perfumes. Are you surprised? Not really. Um, you, I think you all need to have that, um, that chemistry experiment that produces these esters to really, really um, enjoy that smell, it's actually really, really pleasant. Um, okay, the next thing you need to know, and it's very important, is fats and oils, because they are also esters, they're types of esters, and they are naturally occurring esters. So they're, they, um, they, they occur naturally in, in the world, and they are also known as triglycerides. Now the name triglycerides will become more um, understandable in the next uh, 
um, the parts that I'll talk about. Okay, so how are fats and oils or esters formed? Um, they are formed, again, by the reaction between an alcohol, which is known as glycerol, and fatty acids. Now, fatty acids are basically acids that have a very, very long carbon uh, chain. So as you can see, on the left, we have three fatty acids to react with the, the, the glycerol. Yeah, And the, the fatty acids have a carbon chain um, distinguished by the letter R. Okay, And the why they're called R is because you basically <laughs> can't um, feasibly fit the number of C's on the structural formula. So might as well conveniently label it as R. Okay. So let's look at the two reactants again. Uh, we have an alcohol reactant and a carboxylic acid reactant. So that alcohol reactant is known as glycerol. Its actual name is propane 1, 2, 3, all, uh, triol. So why is it called a propane? Because it has three carboxylic acid, uh, three carbon atoms in the carbon chain, and triol because it has three alcohol groups, and each of these alcohol groups connects to a carbon chain, uh, carbon atom separately, yeah? So that's why it's called a one, two, three trial, okay? Now, the fatty acid uh, molecule um, generally consists of a huge number of carbon atoms, so four to 28. An example of uh, a fatty acid is uh, stearic acid or oleic acid. Now let's um, understand fats and oils a bit better. So oils molecules, sorry, oil molecules contain more carbon to carbon double bonds, the double bonds that we find in alkenes than fats. Okay, as you can see, um, there are double bonds that are um, labeled as um, these two dashes, yeah. Now what does this cause? The double bonds cause re repulsion, or they cause an effect of repelling between these uh, molecules. And as a result, um, these molecules cannot pack as closely as fat molecules, which don't have these double bonds. And as a result, um, there are less dispersion forces. Dispersion forces are essentially attraction forces between the oil molecules. So what happens if there are less attraction, um, there's less attraction between these molecules, there requires less energy to melt. Simply put, the oils have a lower melting point than fats, mainly due to the f it having more carbon double bonds, leading to more repulsion, and then leading to less attraction forces between the oil molecules. So it requires less energy to melt oils than fats. Okay, that's what you need to understand. Good. Now, that leads me to the next point, is that fats and oils, um, well, in fats and oils, there's a substance called margarine, which is essentially an oil that has been hardened or um, hydrogenated in a process of hydro hyd hydrogenation, which basically adds an extra hydrogen atom to that carbon double bond to basically break that carbon double bond and make it only single bond. And that's how you increase the melting point of oils and produce a substance called margarine. Now the final concept that you need to understand about esters is a process called hydrolysis. Okay, um, This process is essentially the opposite reaction to esterification to create the ester. So this process, hydrolysis, is a process to break down the ester. Why is it called hydrolysis? As you can see in this reaction here, it includes the reactant water. And that water reactant basically, uh, in addition to a catalyst of typically sodium hydroxide, will break down that ester molecule into a sort of like uh, constituent alcohol and carboxylic um, reactants. 
Okay, so this reaction to produce an ester, esterification, uh, and a hydrolysis reactions are uh, what makes up a reversible reaction. Okay, so that is it for esters. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them as best as I can. And I wish you all a pleasant and uh, safe uh, time with your families. And um, I wish you all the best with your studies.